are you taking advantage of this sweet spot for you right now, given that DuPont and Dow, Bayer and Monsanto are all caught up in trying to merge successfully? Well, ours is actually an acquisition. ChemChina acquired us seven months ago. And because it was an acquisition, we're still Syngenta. We're still a Swiss-based global company with Chinese owners. And uh, I think very advantaged because we can stay focused on the customers. We can stay focused on doing what we need to win in the marketplace and not be distracted by other issues. Well, exactly. So how exactly do you plan to take some market share maybe from the others while they're a little distracted? Well, first of all, we've got to drive our base business. And we're the number one in the world today in our crop protection products business. And we're number three today in the seeds business. So we want to further strengthen our leading crop protection business. And we want to turn around our, our number three seeds business headed towards a strong number three and closing the gap on the others. And we're doing that by investing in our base business, focusing on customers, and doing bolt-on acquisitions. One was just recently announced. Well, and in fact, it, to that point on seeds, we're just seeing Bayer literally in the last while uh, announced that it's divesting some more seeds units in order to have the antitrust approval process go faster. Yes. But on seeds, how much stronger are they getting thanks to weather shocks? And, and will the speed of seed development be faster than you know, the ability to ramp up demand in order to meet that? Yes. There, there's new technologies that are fantastically helping us advance seed breeding. Um, we know more about the genetics of plants than we ever have before, and we're able to use tools like CRISPR-Cas9 gen genome editing to, to more rapidly increase the yields of plants, but also make them more resistant to diseases and insects. But what about the demand side of that equation? Well, the demand, the demand continues to increase for, for food around the world with population increase, and also with people coming out of poverty in places like China and Southeast Asia and Africa and going from rice only or carbohydrate only diets to, to wanting to eat proteins. And we're able to, 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 to breed into the seeds the ability to increase yields, increase the quality, increase the protein content where needed and, and resist the, the diseases and the insects. The seeds and sprays model, Mr. Mr. Fearwell, which of course you were the first to attempt, you know, this one-stop shop to farmers, is it still valid? I mean, are you going to change your tack on that approach? I think it's, it's still absolutely very valid that where you can provide the farmer the seeds and also the crop protection products and these digital tools that we have now are incredible. Now, every farm in the world is really a, a, a plot of, of a test plot to evaluate products and, 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 and technologies, agronomic technologies. So we're able to work with farmers around the world to better position our seeds and our crop protection products to help them improve the yields so they improve their profitability, but also reduce their environmental impact. Significant ability to reduce CO2 emissions and water use, which of course are major issues for, for the world. 30% of the greenhouse gases emissions in the world are from agriculture and 70% of the world's fresh water is used in agriculture. Our technologies help the farmers be more profitable but also deal with these environmental issues. On the subject of technology, that we've got big eye, we've sorry, we've got big data, we've got AI, and of course they're bringing along these machines right now that can hit, they can hit weeds with laser, laser sort of technology, laser-like precision, and in the process they're using 90% less chemicals. How are you dealing with that threat? We're, we're on the forefront of this opportunity. We don't view it as a threat. We see the technologies that are able to, to more precisely. Uh, identify where the weeds and the diseases are and the insects are and, 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 and target them as a, as a big advantage to help pro the profitability of farmers but also the environmental impact. We have something called the Good Growth Plan that we, we roll out with farmers around the world where we train 20 million farmers a year and, and with the practices that help them reduce greenhouse gas emissions by an average of 20 percent, reduce water consumption by significant amounts, and reduce pesticide use by using better pesticides that, and, and more targeted approaches. So it's good for the farmer, it's good for the environment, and good for Syngenta. What do you make of the political, what do you make of the political focus right now on the likes of pesticides, on the likes of herbicides. We've got the EU looking into whether yeah. to extend that license right now for glyphosate, you know, the weed killer. 
how 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 could that impact you? How's that affecting the likes of Syngenta and agriculture right now? Yeah, we're not a glyphosate company. This, another competitor is in, in the glyphosate business, but we we think it's very important to have open conversations with government regulators, with NGOs and others about what sustainable agriculture is. And if you if you if you look at the the need to feed the world and take care of the planet, environmental sustainability, it requires the right pesticide and seed technologies to do that. You have to have the yields and you have to protect the plants against weeds, insects and diseases. And we believe that our approach with the good growth plan is, is the right way to go. In fact, we were just awarded by the Alliance for Sustainable Agriculture, which is a very large organization with lots of, of food company, retailers, agribusiness companies involved, just awarded us, the Nature Conservancy, a world-class NGO, and the Kellogg's Corporation, uh, gave us the collaboration award for working together for sustainable agriculture practices for wheat in the U.S. to protect the water and the environment. Well, and congratulations. Thank I you. I do want to ask you about your China-owned structure, though, and how that changes the model, because Fitch just put you on watch negative, and it's to do with a variety of things, but one of the things that you know Fitch is looking at is the lesser transparency, which could be good for Syngenta, but do you plan on trying to you know, save your credit rating? What's the outlook for debt market financing? Yeah, we, we have a very strong free cash flow. We've got lots of levers to pull. We've got uh, working capital best practices that we're deploying to improve our working capital. We've got uh, non-core assets that, that are, are, are not doing anything for us today, real estate assets that we can use. So we'll, we'll work with that. We're working with ChemChina, and, and we will solve our, our balance sheet issues that they raise and we'll preserve our investment grade rating and, and we'll be fine financially. Speaking of China, it, you know, it said recently that it wants to get to 10 percent ethanol in all cars by 2020. Yes. How doable is that? I think it's very doable. I also think it's important. Uh, in fact, Chem, uh, Syngenta has a special product called Enogen in corn and this will be corn based ethanol. Uh, in the United States, ethanol is corn based and this Enogen product has a enzyme inside of it that enhances the ability of that corn to produce ethanol in production, ethanol production facilities. Today we're in nearly 20 percent of the ethanol produced in the United States and we plan to bring this technology to China to help China enhance their ability to produce ethanol effectively. Mr. Fairwald, I mean it's, it's an amazing time isn't it? Dow DuPont, Bayer, Monsanto, ChemChina, Syngenta all at once. What's the next phase of M&A or is that it? <laughs> I think that's it for the big deals. <laughs> I'm not sure there's more that could be done. But I think now everybody will, will, will focus on, on, on their core areas and look for building their base businesses, but also adding, adding uh, bolt-on acquisitions to fill gaps. That's what we're doing in Seeds. We announced the Nidera acquisition, a very important acquisition for us in, in Brazil and Argentina. Uh, we're looking at technology companies to enhance our digital capabilities, which are very strong today, but of course lots of new stuff is happening in the digital world. So we're venturing with companies, we're partnering with companies, and we're looking for acquisitions. So it's, it's going to be more targeted at filling gaps that we have geographically or technology-wise to be able to, to, to continue to strengthen our number one position in crop protection and strengthen our number three position and seeds towards a, a stronger position. The relationship you know, between free trade countries the world over is changing radically and I wonder how that is going to affect Syngenta, particularly when you look at the US and the TPP for example. Yeah, well first of all I would say that, that exports of agriculture products from the United States is very important. The farmer in the United States is the most productive in the world, first to adopt new technologies. Um, has a lot of benefits with, with the United States farming capability and agriculture that today we, we export around the world and, and we think that needs to continue. So I think um, Secretary Purdue, the Trump administration are cognizant of that and see us having significant advantages in the United States and so we need to keep the trade channels open to enhance the ability of, of farmers in the U.S. to export around the world. You've had specific conversations with the president yourself? With his administration, of course, yeah. We, we very much support open, fair, fair trade around the world.